I know this seems very unfair to you, but you are stuck in this room. Twenty nineteen's Glass is writer director M. Night Shyamalan's most recent effort to punch us all in the face with a super shocking twist. Except this time, the twist isn't that we were all dead all along, or that we live in a different age than we thought, which honestly doesn't really change anything. This time, the twist is that after two decades of waiting, we get a sequel film that we never knew we were waiting for. After nineteen long years, the lousy text ending of Unbreakable is finally redeemed with an amazing and worthy sequel that gives the story the conclusion it deserves. That's how things were supposed to go, at least. Unfortunately, as always seems to be the case with Shyamalan, turned out there's one more twist. Glass is not worthy of being a sequel to Unbreakable. It's nowhere near the level of Unbreakable. In fact, even just as its own movie, it's pretty problematic. As you at this point might expect, Glass is littered with smaller issues that Shyamalan has become infamous for. We have awkward blocking where characters just stand around unnaturally because it's not their turn to do stuff yet. We have total disconnection from reality where it takes the police an eternity to interfere with known serial murderers. And of course, we also have clunky, very on the nose exposition dialogue. The walls are equipped with 46 high-pressured nozzles. This is a hypnosis light. I have installed cameras on every floor, every area. You were the sole survivor of a devastating train derailment 19 years ago. He went through the basement tunnels to be seen by as many cameras as possible. I gave you this is a camera. You were the sole survivor. However, these issues are smaller, and so I wouldn't go as far as to call them the problems with glass. Because at least for me, there is just one problem with glass. One root problem that serves as the main reason behind all the significant troubles and flaws that this movie has. The problem of containment. For those of you who aren't aware, a contained movie essentially means a smaller movie that for the most part is contained within a single key location. It might take place in an airplane, it might take place on a train, it might take place in a coffin, or as is the case in Glass, within the borders of a mental hospital. If you want to save money, making your film contained is a good choice. And since Shyamalan wanted to finance this movie entirely by himself, that's what he did. The issue is, what I think he failed to realize is is that along with containment come a few different pitfalls very easy to stumble in, which is exactly what happened with Glass. So here's the plan for today's video. Let's take a closer look at 2019's Glass in order to see what pitfalls there are with films in the contained genre and what you need to do to avoid falling in them. Let's see how containment ended up being the key reason why Glass was always going to fail to live up to the movie it was meant to conclude. We already established that the usual main reason for setting a movie in a single key location is because it's cheap. However, for the audience, that's not enough. For the audience, you also have to have a proper narrative reason for doing so. As in, in every contained movie, you have to establish the premise in such a way that the movie is required to be contained. In Glass, for example, the first act before the mental hospital is dedicated entirely to introducing this promise of the premise. Why don't we save the next walk for the day after tomorrow? When we find this hoard, I'll take a mental health day. It's him. Based on this first act setup, the overall premise of the story is very clear. David Dunn has to find a way to stop the horde and save the people he holds hostage. And since they both then get locked up in the same mental hospital as Mr. Glass, the contained element by logic would then reshape the premise into something like this. Mr. Glass uses his high intelligence to set the horde loose and take over the entire hospital. And so now, David Dunn has to find a way to defeat them both and save the people they hold hostage. Kinda like Batman Arkham Asylum, only a less action-heavy, unbreakable version of it. This honors what the movie promises to be, and it has a clear narrative reason for being set within this one location. But of course, that's not actually what happens. I understand that the three of you think you are superhuman. You've convinced yourselves you have extraordinary gifts. I am here to discuss the possibility that you are mistaken. 
Instead of honoring the premise set up by the first act, the contained section of Glass suddenly becomes about this thing where this woman is trying to convince the main superpowered characters that they don't actually have superpowers, which in of itself already makes no sense, because we've clearly seen in earlier movies and in this movie that their superpowers are, in fact, real. And so, when the ultimate purpose of the movie turns out to be not about David Dunn versus the Horde, but instead about this random cult versus superpowered humans, it's very easy for the audience to feel frustratingly unfulfilled. But what makes this feeling of frustrating unfulfillment infinitely worse is the fact that the only reason this sudden change seems to be happening is because of the film's contained element. As in, the reason we didn't get this David Dunn versus the Horde movie we were promised is simply because the film makers wanted to save money by shooting in one primary location. Compare this to the Ryan Reynolds film Buried, which is perhaps the most contained contained movie of all time. With this film, there is no question about what it is. The premise sets up a movie about a guy trying to get out of a buried coffin, and that's exactly what the movie is. I'm not saying that this makes the movie good, but I am saying that it makes it deliver on what it promises to be, in a way that narratively makes sense. What Buried doesn't do is feature a a full-length first act that promises to be a lone survivor type survival shooter only to then become a movie about a guy trying to get out of a buried coffin. Whatever you promise your audience, you have to in some way deliver on that promise. As in, if you set your movie up to be narratively about one thing, you cannot suddenly then move it to a specific place to be narratively about a whole other thing. Because if you do, that just makes the audience wish that this specific place didn't exist at all. Your dad is trying to fight her abductor. Your son is trying to best his dad. He's the anarchist. He's the brains. He's the reluctant hero. That sounds good. The next containment related issue with Glass is the fact that this movie most of the time feels excruciatingly slow. Now, slow movies as a concept isn't necessarily a problem. Unbreakable is a slow character focused movie which works just great. But the difficulty with films like Glass that are primarily set in a single location is that unlike in Unbreakable, you don't have the option to change the environment to create a sense of movement and variety. Meaning when your story doesn't move the main characters from one place to another, it's much more difficult for the audience to distinguish sections of the story from each other, which in turn amplifies the feeling that nothing is happening and that things are standing in place. And accordingly, the only way to create a sense of movement and variety in movies like Glass is by featuring a constant sense of progress. Just to explain this better, let's look at Jodie Foster's flight plan, which takes place mostly in an airplane. Since this movie is set almost entirely in a plane, it would be very easy to feel like things aren't moving and that nothing is happening, because we're always in the plane and nowhere else. But luckily, in order to prevent this feeling, the filmmakers here made sure that things inside the plane are constantly progressing. First, Jodie Foster boards the plane with her daughter. Then the daughter disappears. Then we find out that the daughter was never here. Then Jodie Foster begins going mad and takes things into her own hands. Then we find out that maybe things aren't as they seem. And then, and then, and then. The situation is constantly advancing and escalating in a way that there are clear, distinguishable checkpoints and sections in the story where it would be impossible for us to go back to the way things were. We don't have variety in environment, but we have variety in story. We have a constant sense of progress. Comparing this to Glass, the issue right away becomes very evident. After David Dunn and the Horde get locked up in the hospital, there's a very lengthy period of time where absolutely nothing happens. Our three main characters just sit in their rooms while this doctor woman spouts meaningless exposition at them, in a way that nothing changes. It gets to the point where at the 50 minute mark, we are in the exact same story section situation as we were at the 20 minute mark. We occasionally do cut away to the side characters, but that doesn't help because our main characters do nothing. And even when our main characters try to do something, it's the exact same thing over and over and over. <laughs> After 
After 40 minutes of nothing, at the 1 hour mark we finally get our next big story checkpoint, when it turns out that Mr. Glass is actually faking his uh, retardation condition. And to give the movie some credit, it does get better from here, because now the situation is progressing, now things are actually happening in a way that we can't go back. I won't say that these new story checkpoints are as frequent as they could be, but at least they exist. At least now it's somewhat possible to distinguish these sections from each other. Because when that's not possible, when there is no significant story progress in film set in a single location, it will always feel like things are not only slow, but standing in place. And when your film stands in place, the biggest effect it can ever hope to have on audiences is to put them to sleep. Relating to both previous points, the third pitfall of contained movies revolves around static, inactive heroes. When class begins, our main hero Bruce Willis is trying to track down the Horde so that he can stop him and save the captured girls. Meaning, he has a clear objective that he is actively trying to achieve. So far, fantastic. But then, we get to the hospital. All of a sudden, the main goal of stopping the Horde has become redundant. And consequently, Bruce Willis's character in of itself has become redundant. He doesn't have a goal, he doesn't do anything, he just sits in rooms listening to this female doctor. But of course, don't take my word for it. Let's check in to see what kind of exciting stuff Bruce Willis has going on right now. Inactive heroes without clear strong goals and objectives are never a good choice. They can occasionally work, but they're never a good choice. But since a contained movie means that the hero is stuck in a static environment, making them inactive is the equivalent of signing your movie's death sentence. Because if your hero doesn't do anything and they can't go anywhere either, there is no movie. Genuinely, there is no movie. Sitting in a room for 45 minutes waiting for the villains to finally do something isn't a movie. To be fair, I think Shyamalan at some point did realize this, and so he added in occasional scenes where the son of David Dunn is trying to find a way to get him free. Unfortunately, this isn't a movie about the son of David Dunn. It's a movie about David Dunn and the Horde and Mr. Glass. And since the latter two are the villains, that leaves only David Dunn as the main hero. And if David Dunn doesn't actively do something for some specific reason, that leaves him and the film as a whole boring and pointless. Compare this to Buster Keaton's strain movie, The General. While you could maybe argue that this isn't a traditional contained movie because the external scenery is constantly changing, I would say that in essence it is, because for the most part, it takes place on a train. And if you look past all the flashy, funny visual comedy stuff, you might find that at their very core, Buster Keaton here and David Dunn in Glass are in a very similar situation. Even though Buster Keaton isn't just standing around in rooms, he is just standing around on this train, waiting for it to go forward. But the reason it works so magnificently is because his reason for doing so is so incredibly clear and strong. Everything he does, every obstacle he overcomes, is so that he can save his fiancée and bring her back home. And before that, to get back his beloved train. Which is a lot more intriguing to watch than say if Buster Keaton was just driving around for the heck of it, without any reason for doing so. I'm not saying that David Dunn should have transformed into balding Tom Cruise, or that he should have hopped on a train to chase after the bad guys. But I am saying that he should have always had a clear goal that he was always actively trying to accomplish, like he did in the first act. Maybe you do the Arkham Asylum version of this movie, where he tries to defeat the bad guys after they take over the hospital. Or if that's too much, maybe he just wants to get back to his son for some important reason. Just something, anything that doesn't involve him sitting on the floor without a purpose to exist. Overall, if you're planning to do a smaller movie in the contained genre-like class, here's what you need to keep in mind. Firstly, you have to have a proper narrative reason for being set in a single location, in a way that honors your premise. Secondly, you have to create a constant sense of progress by dividing the story into separate, distinguishable sections and checkpoints. And thirdly, you have to make sure that your main hero has a clear goal that they're always actively working to achieve. 
Plus, also, as one quick final addition, it's always a pretty good idea to keep small single location movies short and to the point. In other words, try to avoid all non-crucial scenes and moments so that you can keep the total runtime around 90 minutes, give or take. Just at least maybe don't go over two hours. Yo, my man. How's it going? What's going on? What's happening? Looking tired, man. You still taking that multivitamin? Take a little bit of grapeseed extract. It'll keep it all in there. You'll absorb it into your body faster. Let me ask you, how much water are you drinking? 